Okay, uh, today I will have a photo book discussion with Lawrence Rusty about her book titled There Are No Homosexuals in Iran. Born to Iranian parents, uh, Lawrence grew up in Switzerland and where she studied photography and received her bachelor's degree there. So most Western countries now officially accept homosexuality, but in Iran, it is still uh, punishable by death. In 2007, the Iranian president at the time, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, speaking at Columbia University, he said, uh, in Iran, we do not have homosexuals like in your country. So uh, through this book, we can see many photos captured by Lawrence about the Iranian refugees living in Turkey, where hundreds of gay Iranians are waiting to move to a tolerant country. Okay, hi Lawrence, how are you? Hi, fine and you. Okay, so uh, how are you uh, doing there and how's the situation in Geneva during this uh, global pandemic? Well, everything already starts again in Geneva. So it's a little bit scary because you have the impression that nothing never happened. Um, I mean, since two weeks now, almost uh yeah we we started to reopen almost everything like not everything but the restaurants and all the shops so um, finger cross to not have a second vague okay yeah okay sounds good so yeah about your book why did you want to bring up this issue about homosexuality First, uh, I think it's because of the human rights, obviously. Um, but if I go back uh, a little bit um, uh, before, um, it's probably because I was born in Switzerland. So my parents are from Iran and I, I grew up in Switzerland. And I think I had this mixed culture uh, that made me realize that gender codes and also some things about freedoms weren't the same in the two countries and and so i started to question uh this yeah this uh this doubt about femininity and masculinity and uh, also the meaning of this binary uh way of seeing gender and then naturally i came back i came on the subject of homosexuality uh, in Iran, when I say um, the problem of the of the problematic, it's because in Iran, as you said, it's uh, punishable by the death penalty. So people cannot live their sexual identity freely there. And for me, it wasn't uh, understandable uh, that uh, in the country of my parents, it was like this. And um, in the in a second hand, I never lived in Iran, so it wasn't. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, um, I didn't imagine to do the project directly in Iran because, I mean, I I always be fascinated by the country and uh, there is so many great photographer and artists in Iran. So I always thought like I was born in Switzerland, so I will do work uh, around uh, my my country. And, uh, and um, Iran is my country of origin. So it's maybe why the work have been made in Turkey and not in Iran also. Okay. So um, do you want to present uh, any photos uh, related to your book? Yeah, I can start to show you some picture. Well, first I will maybe show you the book that I've um, uh, before showing you uh, the picture. So this is the book. Uh, there are no homosexual in Iran and uh, in Farsi. So it's a book that you can read in two. Wait, I am <laughs> in two sides, and uh, it started with. Uh, some interview at the beginning but also on the second beginning because in farsi you read from right to left and in in english from left to right and uh, in the middle you have uh, 
all the all the portrait and the picture of the city of Denizli. So I will show you then. Do you want me to start to, to share the screen? Uh, yeah, 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 you can share your, uh, the screen. So um, I, 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 I saw your books uh, during Young Photo Festival last year and it was fascinating uh, about homosexuality that, um, yeah, because my interest in gender and sexuality, so that's why I was so really interested with your book. Um, so, um, so yeah, as, uh, as you, it, it was also the same for me. So I start, as I said, I started to question this notion of, um, um, masculinity and femininity. And then quite naturally I, I came on the subject of uh, homosexuality and, um, at the beginning, I didn't know anything about uh, the situation of, uh, of the refugees in Denizli. So I first started to to just want to work on this uh, on this issue and uh, after a few weeks uh, I had sent some emails to some NGOs uh, uh, that had forwarded my email to one volunteer in uh, Denizli that was working with them and um, he explained me that uh, there were many refugees from Iran uh, that are coming in, uh, in Turkey to ask asylum uh, for a third, to get a visa for a third country. So um, a week later, I went over there and I started uh, to work on the, the project for about uh, two years, which of course way back and way in. So I, uh, I was doing my uh, photographic bachelor uh, in. Uh, at Ecal in Switzerland. And um, so I had only sent email to different institutions or NGO to see if they had any contact uh, or about uh, with people that are working on the issue of uh, uh, homosexuality in Iran. So it was my own initiative mm. and my own work also. And so I can show you a little bit of the pictures. Do you see them right? Yes. On your screen? Okay. Yes. So this is the Iranian refugee living in limbo, right? Yeah. So all the pictures have been taken uh, in, uh, in the Nizli. So tell me about like, one story of gay that you captured in this book related to their living in limbo. So um there were many different stories uh, i mean it's the same as all the different lives that people have but one thing that i maybe find um the similar between each story because i did always an interview before doing any pictures and we spent time and we i mean we we, tr uh, we tried to learn about each other and to trust also each other for me it, this was an important part of the project um, and then the things that was maybe similar is the the need of living their love freely. So, so everyone that had flee Iran, what, it was either to leave their relationship uh, freely in uh, with the hope with the hope of leaving their relationship in a third country. Uh, so they flee. Uh, in couple or uh, other people who had uh, who got uh, a problem that happened suddenly in Iran and they had to let everything uh, behind them and uh, leave the country. Uh, but if I want to make it short, because it will be too long to talk about one story, um, I was really touched by one story about one young man that I've met uh, uh, in the last year of the project, who explained me how he came in in Turkey, and I found that uh, his story gives maybe hopes to other, um, yeah, to other uh, people that are dealing with the same uh, problem, because it was uh, his family who helped him to flee the, uh, yeah, to 
to go to Turkey and to ask asylum. So um, I think it was, he was about 21 years old and since, maybe since three years, his family learned about his, uh, I, I mean, I don't remember, the interview is in the book, but I don't remember all the detail exactly. So I don't want to say wrong things. Um, and uh, his family uh, took a little bit of time to accept and to understand so who he was and, uh, and to accept him with his boyfriend. And at the end, uh, his family also realized that he couldn't have a proper life in Iran. So they offer him the, the ticket and some money to, yeah, to basically go abroad and to be able to live his, uh, his life uh, without any uh, fear anymore. And um, I found it was, it was changing between all the other stories that I was um, hearing because one of the things also that was really difficult for the people that I've met is that the fact that maybe there is the government that you can be scared of, but the things that you are the most scared is that your family uh, will deny you if they learn about your um, sexual identity. And this is something really, yeah, really heavy uh, to lose your family or to, to n that people won't understand uh, who you are or think that you are maybe sick and we can cure you. Yeah. Okay, so I, I saw many hidden faces there uh, or subjects who turned their face away from the camera. So could you please tell me more about the, the concept? Yeah, so um, you still see the screen sharing, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, uh, so for example, on these pictures, uh, so I just said that I always did some interview uh, before doing any pictures because when I came in Turkey I first thought that if I wanted to do a work about uh, homosexuality and to um, to show um, to show a work also about uh, identity uh, I had to, to show the face of the the people that were in a way testimony testimony do we say like this yeah uh, about uh, the, the situation. And I quickly realized that it wasn't possible because anonymity was still uh, a protection for them. I mean, they are, they are not in Iran anymore, but they are also not in a third country. When I say third country, it's when you arrive in a country and you ask asylum, normally you don't stay to, if the country is just next to your country, I mean, Turkey and Iran has a border, you won't stay in in this country, and you have to get a visa for, uh, yeah, a third country, and um, and so th this is all a process with the UNHCR and and everything, and um, so there is the risk that they they will uh, have to if they are not approved uh, at the end of the years of process they ha will have to go back in Iran because or to stay illegally in Turkey, or I don't know. So, so yeah, anonymity is still a protection for this time of, of kind of limbo in, uh, in Turkey waiting for their answer. And, um, and so I have to deal, I had to find a new way of doing a, um, portrait without uh, being able to show their face. So I thought, okay, um, if we do interview, maybe we'll be able to find some element about their personal, personal life and to stage, stage it. So in these pictures, for example, you see a um, couple in a kind of wedding suit. And one of their dream was that once they got to um, Canada or in, a, in another country, it will be to get married. So I had chance they had bring the suit uh, with them from Iran and we went uh, downstairs, I mean, down of their apartment and we 
kind of steal some flowers in the street <laughs> and try to make like um yeah it's um it's really quick kind of staging i mean we use i use all the elements i would find on the on the place and um and we try to to cover the eyes with the flowers and to give this impression of uh, of of wedding in this picture and for all the pictures there is this thinking of okay what can we do how much time do the people have because uh they are not all equal also as a refugee some of them have to work a lot so it's depend of their situation what once they get uh, um in turkey and uh, and uh, also yeah i mean i would say more than 95% of the people i've met had to work in uh, textile fabric uh, illegally and so they don't have a lot of time most of them, yeah i see so when uh they're living as a refugee there uh they still uh, do many uh illegal works for them uh, for their life right um yeah because um once you get in in turkey so i did the work in denizli maybe explain why the work have been made all in denizli it's because um um once they get in turkey uh, they and they ask for asylum, uh, Turkey and UNHCR will assign uh, people in different city. And the uh, uh, LGBTQI plus community are often assigned in Denizli, wh which is one of the city where most of them are uh, waiting. And your process will last for, I mean, in 2014, uh, the refugees crisis the world uh, refugees crisis was uh, a little bit less than today maybe and so it will take about two years to get your process done and you have no helping during these two years so you have to figure it out yourself on how living in the country now today um, some people that i've know that i I know are still waiting since seven years because a lot of things happened. The U.S. ban happened. I mean, uh, Canada took, uh, for example, uh, in priority the Syrian uh, refugees because of the war, and uh, so it can, yeah, last for three, five, seven years, and you have to live by yourself with no helping, and so it's a. Uh, free, illegal, cheap uh, hand uh, that people exploit. Uh, ex exploit? Um, I don't know how you say it in English, uh, in the factory. Um, okay. This is quite sad, but... Yeah. So, so how many like Iranian refugees are living there? The number? Um, uh, I, I cannot say uh, how much uh, it is today it's in, in Turkey. Um, two years ago, uh, it was more than hundreds, only in the city of Denizli, for the LGBTQI plus community. For the Iranians, uh, I don't, uh, I think it was thousands, uh, because you will have different people, I mean, different issues. Some people live um, Iran because of uh, uh, per per persecution about uh, religion or um, or different uh, other things. So it really depends. Yeah. So I'm wondering why they chose like, Turkey as a country uh, like, for their for their safety, uh, living uh, as gay there rather than another country. So. It's uh, because Iran and Turkey has a border and as an Iranian citizen, you don't need a visa to enter to Turkey. So, so by bus, through mountains or with plane, you can, it's depend of, uh, again, what's your situation and if 
get your post passport or not. Um, you can get to Turkey. It, it's the country where you can get them more easily. And, um, and also where you can ask for asylum. So I guess it's why. Okay, I see. So, um, yeah, tell me about your the other process behind this uh, photo book making. Why uh, did you want to make a photo book of, about this issue instead you just like send this photo project to the media? Um, so, I'm, my, I would say my relation to photography is more on long-term uh, photo projects. Um, so from the beginning, um, I mean, instead of doing maybe a photo journalist and send it to the media, as you said. Um, so from the beginning, I had imagined the work um, on, I had imagined the work as an exhibition and as a photo book. Uh, for me, the, when I started to, meet all these people. I think I have interviewed and photographed around 40, 50 people. Of course, I have met more people uh, than this, but uh, I mean, not everyone was agreed or could be uh, involved in the project. And um, you can see that in the pictures, uh, they are quite light and sometimes even festive. If we take, for example, the the balloon uh, picture. So you will have an impression that maybe the situation it's not really, um, yeah, difficult uh, in the work. The work show more love maybe uh, through the pictures that uh, victimizing. I mean, the people. I try to not victimize the the people I photograph, and so in the book form you will have a more intimate uh, story where you will have um, still life a picture of the city of the of the Nizli quite empty and um, also the interview of uh, different people uh, that I've met and uh, and you have another dimension of the work maybe more um, deep and uh, yeah, in a way heavy because the interview are, um, are I quite, uh, yeah, um, I mean, the story are, are really difficult. And um, in the other hand, the reason why I made the picture in this kind of, um, I would say, I don't know, um, graphic, uh, um, um, staging it's because I also think that you can share a story or a message really quick quickly through uh, to the pictures before doing photography I studied graphic design mm. so it's also maybe why I'm constructing uh, some image like this and if for example you see a picture like this one you directly know that we are talking about uh, homosexuality and also about religion you don't know where it's happening but uh, the picture can give a message really quickly and in a universal way and um, so it's also why I imagine the work in yeah this exhibition form where I only show uh, most of the time the staging pictures and not the other picture that you find in the book I see Okay, um, like for, for the balloon one, what is the philosophy, uh, philosophy uh, behind the photo? So for this one, it was because um, the couple behind it uh, explained me that since they arrived in Turkey, they only like to wear colorful clothes. So I mean, I, I took to build the pictures, I took like really, sometimes um, small element of their personality or, uh, or the story they, they told me. And um, so I was thinking it would be funny to, to bring this colorful uh, world, word that they are using every day in their clothes uh, to the pictures. So I went to buy some balloon and 
we try to to stage this uh, these pictures and then they kind of wear the clothes they had the more gray and black they had um, to construct with him with it but if for example you take um, the picture I was showing just before um, one of the two uh, person told me that um, once when he was uh, younger he was wearing the veil of uh, prayer of um, his mother and uh, each time and the high heel also of his mother and each time his mother um, catch him with it he was punished and so he described me the um, the fabrics and told me that the fabrics was um, little uh, blue flowers on the white uh, uh, fabrics and I went to buy two different kind and asked him what what is the um, which one would be the most uh, similar of the one he was talking about. And then I, we started to do, uh, to try different staging. So I came with some elements for doing the picture, but I have no idea how to do the picture. And then, um, I don't know, maybe after three times of doing shootings on different days and even different months, uh at the last picture i asked his partner ah but maybe you can hide together under the pictures and then the 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 picture was born like this so it's always a little bit of hazard and also a lot of collaboration on the making of the pictures i see okay so do you still keep in touch with the subjects? Uh, I mean, is there any difference uh, about their situation between the first time you photograph them and with the, their current situation? Yeah, so since 2014, I saw many of them uh, flying for Canada, US, uh, or uh, also Spain since, uh, since a year, I think. Um, Actually, uh, probably also Switzerland, we start to take uh, some, I mean, I know some people uh, that have been called from Switzerland directly in Denizli. So maybe uh, uh, some of them will arrive here. Um, but the situation didn't also change about homosexuality in Iran. So since I continue to go uh, each year in Denizli, I, I continue to meet new people that are still waiting. So most of them from 2014 are maybe uh, left by now, unless uh, uh, um, like the one that I told you that are waiting since five, seven years. And uh, the, the people that I've met in 2015 are maybe waiting or, and every day there is new people coming. So the situation is getting actually worse and bigger as the time of waiting is really long and uh, and yeah the some of the people also came back in iran because at some point you have the impression to losing your life waiting for an answer that never come and uh, and so you decide that you will live uh, hidden all your life uh, yeah, this is a picture taken from their balcony uh, where they were living. So it's uh, in the book, um, you will have more picture of the place where, I mean, a little bit the place where they were living. And, uh, and, uh, and this one, it's, uh, I mean, all the picture do you, that you have in the book, I would say that there is a reason why I choose them. I'm not a really good uh, landscape photographer or archi architecture uh, photographer either. Uh, I only put the picture because I thought it was important to have them. Mm, I see. For, for example, a few months later, uh, a friend of 
hours with the people on this picture. We, he started a crowdfunding for him because he's one of the person that he's waiting since seven years uh, with a really difficult background. And, um, and he's also a very close friend of mine. So I'm just waiting for him to leave um, the country. But well, now with all the pandemic that happened, everything got more slow than, uh, than ever. So we keep the finger crossed at mm. his end. Yeah. I heard like in Iran, you cannot be gay, but you can be transgender or transsexual. So you, yeah. Uh, so you, uh, you cannot really be, be uh, transgender. I would say you can be trans, uh, uh, transsexual. Transsexual, yeah. As they say, I mean, today we don't use anymore the word. Uh, I mean, in in Europe at least uh, uh, about transsexual, but we say trans as. Being trans is not about your sexual identity, but your gender identity. Um, and um, the problem in the Iran is that they don't accept trans uh, gender people or trans uh, people. It just to, I mean, it just to make the yeah, the society really binary again. If you don't feel right in your 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 gender, then you have to go on the opposite one, and you have to start start all the process and go until the surgery, for example. And if, for example, you are um, so, there is also a really big stigmatization between homosexuality and the transgender uh, people because then a lot of people will think that uh, the trans people are maybe the homosexual uh, people as that, for example, if you are gay and um, you go to, to a psychologue, he will tell you like, there is no problem. Uh, but uh, I mean, there is some people that are open-minded, but uh, most of the time they will say that uh, we can cure it and you are in the wrong gender. And of course, if we are talking about your sexual identity and not your gender identity, you will true in a, yeah, you will start a nightmare of process and most of the time it won't finish well because it's not something about your gender identity, but your sexual identity. And so, I don't know if it's really helping the situation in Iran. If you accept uh, trans people rights, then you you should be able to to be uh, wherever you want and not have to to do any surgery or to take uh, hormone therapy and anything. I mean, people should be free to yeah. to be whoever they want and yes. to be with whoever they yes. want yes okay so yeah um, I would like to ask like more personal questions so what is your opinion about homosexual your personal so, opinion as I said um, uh, just before I think everyone should be able to live freely uh, with whoever they want and uh, with uh, and be whoever they want also i mean everyone should have the same rights and we should have equality between all genders and uh, i'm not really i mean <laughs> i'm i'm against this binary society that uh, we live in and uh, and if we go a little bit uh, further than this i even don't really understand what's meant to be yeah a woman or a man what are the definition of this and um, this heteronormative way of seeing the the word so so i think um so i just hope that in the next year uh i mean we will have less homophobia and more rights for uh uh for the yeah for the people 
and uh, yeah, basically okay. it's this. <laughs> okay, so um, do you have so you you will continue this project or you, you do you have any any other projects uh, related to gender and sexuality? So the project about uh, refugees, homosexual in Turkey. I mean, in the, the, the title it's in Iran, but uh, uh, they are in Turkey. Um, it's finished, but uh, I continue to work uh, on gender issue. And uh, actually I'm working on a project about, uh, about femininity and the, yeah, the meaning of being a, a woman, a true uh, singular other portrait that I, I've met with with people and um, so the work is coming out pretty soon I think um, and uh, I mean I may exhibit it uh, um, yeah also in a few months uh, for the first time so so I'm looking for <laughs> your <laughs> hope you will you will hear read um, hear about yeah 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 please uh, tell me about <laughs> your 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 uh, feature exhibition okay um so is there anything else that you would like to add before we close our discussion uh no i think uh, i've talked a lot i hope uh, my english was okay sorry for this and i have so much allergy right now so it was quite difficult to wake up this morning <laughs> <laughs> Success for your work and your, your projects ahead. Okay, thank you. Hope to see you soon, uh, maybe in Geneva or maybe when you're in Indonesia. Okay. Yeah, with pleasure.